gallery and check out the exhibition. You have till September 12th. You also can come to the closing reception um, from two to four on the 12th. Um, masks are required and there will not be any refreshments, unfortunately, to limit the spread and keep people socially distanced. Um, but you're more than welcome to bring your friends out, um, family out to see the exhibition. It's a great exhibition. We've had a ton of foot traffic with it um, and people are very interested. So without further ado, um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I just wanna ask those um, that are joining us to keep your uh, volume muted and your videos off until we get to the Q&A portion. I think there's not enough of us to uh, keep that from being off at the end and we can turn those on and that way everyone can see each other when we open up the Q&A. Um, so I want to welcome you all and also welcome um, and introduce our juror for Constructed Visions 3, which is Casey um, Whittier, I'm sure is how you pronounce your last name. I uh, didn't want to butcher that. She received her BFA from Kansas City Art Institute, and she received her MFA from the University of Colorado in Boulder. Um, she currently is an assistant professor at the Kansas City Art Institute teaching ceramics and social practice. Um, she's got an extensive uh, exhibition record, and she's also, her own work delves into ceramics and installation and um, even some steel work that I saw on your website. Um, you're, I feel like you're delving into everything that we were looking for in Constructed Vision. So I wanna thank you for joining us and also being the juror for this exhibition. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And it was such an honor to uh, look at all the entries and to have a chance, even if it you know, was virtually, to, um, to get a sense of uh, not just artists that are applying to your um, to your exhibition calls, but also to get a greater sense of uh, what's happening in people's studios and, and to find connections amongst the work is really, really a pleasure and an honor. So thank you. Definitely. I was going to say this exhibition, I feel like um, all the work that was submitted was great work. And I felt like a lot of it um, kind of touched base on um, everything that we we're hoping the, uh, the theme would come across. Um, we were looking for fine craft um, in the art world, but artists utilizing it in a contemporary way. Um, I know that for you, um, within your own practice, you're like focusing on um, objects that kind of have a, almost a, like bring about a, notion from the past with somebody or touch on a memory um, and things that are common among us but about these like random objects um, and I felt like even some of the pieces in the show did that um, so I kind of saw a correlation there with your work a little bit um, so my first question for you would be how do you feel um, craft has impacted um, the contemporary art world I know from um, my studies as a graduate student that artists um, that were craft artists were kind of put on the back burner and I don't know if that's the case anymore. So what's your take on that? <laughs> yeah, well, it's something that's fascinated me really my whole life was some of these conversations about the difference between art and craft. Uh, you know, I, I came to art through craft and so um, I think, you know, when I came across that sort of bias, I thought like, wait a second, <laughs> no, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can stand on this. Um, and, you know, I think lately, um, in the last like five to 10 years, as I've, you know, gone further and further in my own practice, and also, um, you know, one of the joys and pleasures of teaching is that I'm working with artists, usually from a different generation who are experiencing um, things in a different way or in different formative years. And so to have the chance to also like hear their thoughts or see what, um, you know, what conceptions they have about conversations between art and craft has been so informative for me. Um, but, you know, I think something that's come up for me since this pandemic happened and it's something that I that I think I'm inclined to consider anyway but 
Um, if there is a moment in which we could assert that craft has saved us, I think that now is a really great time to start shouting that from the rooftops because in the last five months, we've seen people sewing skills um, reach far beyond their individual home. We've seen people, uh, you know, find new ways to create traffic patterns. We've, I mean, we've just seen this emergence. We've seen people, um, you know, more and more uh, giving each other tutorials and um, discussions about, um, you know, legacy and how things are passed down come differently because people are spending more time at home. They're spending more time with their families. Um, I think in addition, um, some of the social justice conversations, you know, have allowed artists and craftspeople also to look at, at um, the histories of the materials um, and techniques that they work with and to bring some of those conversations to light. And so, you know, I, I think I would champion craft really at any moment, no matter what, um, but right now it feels particularly apropos. Um, you know, if there's ever been a time where you looked around your house and thought, could I fix that? Um, I feel like it's now when the fear of calling, you know, some, someone else into your home <laughs> has extra weight it's not just money it's also like our our desire to use our ingenuity and to develop skill and to think about what we actually have the power to do day in day out um, all of those are concepts that are deeply ingrained in my understanding of craft and so you know I think the I think as far as the uh, the art world at large is concerned I I, you know, um, I think that we've also seen uh, those barriers kind of break down in different ways. Um, and I think it's not just through craft. Again, I think craft and social justice um, have really gone hand in hand lately. And, um, and that is so exciting and heartening and, um, and interesting for, for me. And, and it was something that was on my mind as I was looking at submissions and thinking about what even just a show title constructed visions you know it brings together those those two things that i think are really inherent in craft which is that you have an idea or you have a problem to solve or you have you know some sort of vision or goal and then you've also got this like physical material reality that you have to confront in order to uh to make that happen so um yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really grateful to see the word craft in print um, now when I'm reading exhibition reviews or academic things. But more than that, I'm really, uh, again, heartened and inspired by the fact that I'm really seeing craft move um, out of sort of the, the back room or the basement or the garage or these other places and, and into public forums and that it's not just being seen as sort of like this niche thing, but that the power of it is being recognized and shared. Um, I think that's been something that's really come forth for me um, in these last five months and given me a lot of hope and a lot of inspiration. Yeah, definitely. I was going to say, I feel like even um, just me personally, I've seen, like you said, you see people coming forward and bringing these new skill sets or even um, honing them in since we're all spending more time at home. Um, I did read an article recently in Artsy um, by Glenn um, Adamson mm -hmm. called Why the Art World is Embracing Craft. Um, and he kind of talks about how this um, new world is focusing on um, craft and then how the art world is kind of embracing it more um, because we are so um, driven by pushing these mediums. Um, originally, they were kind of born out of this like domestic labor, um, creating utilitarian objects, but now they're being moved forward into creating fine art and being uplifted into these higher categories. Um, and he also touched base on like bringing diversity um, within the craft uh, community. And I completely agree with that. Um, I know as like a printmaker myself that like there's this um, studio presence, but there's also these tons of different techniques that are able to bring um, more diversity to the work. And then same with like ceramics and um, fiber art and all of that. Um, so I do completely agree with that. I think that as we move forward, I think craft will become an even bigger part. Um, 
that being said, um, do you feel that like currently um, with craft being more accepted, do you see artists um, within, I know that since you're a college professor, um, I see more students that I have coming through my class um, kind of dive down this road of um, navigating more towards a craft medium or an interdisciplinary medium. Um, it, what's your experience? Do you see artists more or less gravitating towards these interdisciplinary mediums or um, a craft-minded medium? Yeah, I think in my teaching it's been a little bit of both. I mean, um, you know, one one thing about that, I think, is just recognizing that the school that I teach at is sort of known for uh, for teaching uh, craft skills and also really looking at historical practice and historical precedent. I, I think not always with the breadth that's required or with the like full honesty. I mean, you know, ceramics, especially um, on the ground that we stand, we really owe everything to the indigenous peoples who, uh, who you know, were here and found that clay. And uh, every time you see a shard or, or, you know, see a historical pot, that is the evidence of, uh, you know, how integral and how innate and uh, how deeply human it is to look at the materials that are around you and to find ways to reconstruct or re-envision or uh, you know recontextualize them through a through a physical process of some sort so i definitely see students um, and other artists latching on to that to really thinking about how uh, process and material has meaning and to not um, sort of you know demeaning that or undermining that or trying to like talk over it for formal reasons but um you know i think right now there are so many different types of reckonings it's it's environmental it's social it's immediate i mean you know putting food on the table staying in your house these things are not um, things that are bypassing artists or the art world or even young artists and so i think that there's an expansiveness to the understanding of art and craft and, and maybe also an expansion on understanding how our skills can translate um, to help us and to help our uh, communities in a variety of different ways so you know i've had i've had students over the last few years come to me and say like well, you know, I was gardening the other day and, like, <laughs> and uh, all like, you know, and I was like digging out this hole with my hand and I realized that like, it's actually not that different than what I did in the studio. And it's like, you know, that's just, yes. I mean, there's really nothing else you can say to that, but, um, but, you know, I, I really, um, I really appreciate and understand um, the desire, I think, to, to be very physically engaged with material and also to look around and source from that. And that interdisciplinary um, kind of movement or, or slant that I've seen, I feel like is really a, a recognizing how, um, how many opportunities there are and um, how much can come from interdisciplinary dialogue. So. Um, you know, th that was something, too, that I, I felt like um, in jurying this show that I felt really, really excited about. I, you know, I do come from sort of ceramics, but I, I think I come at ceramics from maybe a little bit of a non-traditional uh, way in the sense that I don't really fit into any one category of being a vessel maker or just or a sculptor. Um, I sort of move in between, and there are times where my work is really ephemeral, and there are times where my work is uh, really, you know, has the ability to be very long lasting. Uh, it was so exciting for me to look uh, at all the artists that submitted to this exhibition and to start to imagine how those different materials and practices might play off one another in the gallery. Mm -hmm. um, and so even right now, like looking behind you and seeing the way that some of the, uh, that light is catching different materials or playing off different forms, um, I think that, you know, this particular show and in general, um, that move in the art world to, to uh, be a little more expansive in thinking and to allow materials and processes and uh, contemporary thoughts and historical practices to speak to one another and to occupy the same space or to be part of the same practice. 
uh, I think we're so much richer for um, for recognizing the value in that and the and the opportunity that's inherent when you start to to try to negotiate um, those relationships. So. Yeah, definitely. I was gonna say I was like, typically with this show, um, we see. Um, not only is craft influential to coming from those traditional craft sense of like ceramics and um, making those utilitarian objects, but now the sculpture world is like entering into that like craft world um, and almost being considered a craft as much as any of the others. Um, it takes a lot of skill to make sculpture um, and do those other things. But with this exhibition, we also see um, as like, the gallery putting it on. Um, out of all of our shows that we put on, we see so much texture come through this show, um, which we typically don't get in our other shows, which is like um, possibly one of the reasons I think me and everyone that comes in, we're always like, oh, this show's just amazing because there's so many things happening. Um, and to be trying to play those off in the gallery well is, um, sometimes hard when you're like got so many things coming from different sides but I think you did such a great job um picking the work in a way that like they everything complemented each other really well um could you talk about just a little bit on your process of like selecting like um what things were you thinking about and how did um some of those artists use these traditional materials in ways that you thought were um I guess, engaging or creative? Yeah, well, you know, I was thinking when I was looking through, um, you know, as someone who, you know, I install most of my own work and most of my own exhibitions and part of my job um, as, a, as a professor is that I also help students install. So we install really big end of semester exhibitions every single uh, semester. And one thing that that's taught me is that actually a, a real like variety of work in a space can resonate in ways that are really unexpected. And again, maybe not don't fit into the traditional idea that there's that, you know, a gallery should hold a really cohesive singular body of work that explores, you know, this sort of narrative or, or a particular idea, but that actually sometimes disson a little bit of dissonance and a little bit of resonance is what like makes really the exhibition um, sing. And so uh, when I was going through, I there were definitely a few things on my mind, and I think I touched on this a little bit in the, um, in the statement of the show, but um, I was definitely thinking about again, how craft is meeting this moment and how uh, artists and craftspeople are, are asserting um, both their uh, ideas or visions and using those materials and uh, traditional processes, but, but innovating on them and sort of owning them. So, you know, when I see, when I see the hoops of a uh, hoop flag, um, I, I, I immediately begin to think about what it means to tie all those knots on the end of a weaving and, um, and that experience I, you know, was imagining that experience of taking each of those um, earrings and, and closing that on and imagining that feeling and that texture and the weight of that object and, and thinking about how easy it is to not remember that um, every piece of fabric that is in our home that protects our bodies, that uh, you know, delineates one form of a padded chair from like the, you know, the softness of a couch or whatever, that at some point, all of that was made by hand. Um, and that we've transferred a lot of those processes to, to machine, but, um, but that there's still room for independent vision and for ingenuity and for uh, artists and craftspeople to, um, to keep innovating and keep transforming. So, you know, I um, I really uh, was thinking about uh, again about material, about process, about craft. Um, certainly, thinking about um, you know how I might interact with these objects. I, I imagine, especially people who are often when you have grown up in craft or when it's something that you're thinking about a lot, you're you're thinking about the tactility. Um, and you're thinking about potential use. And even the 
semblance of use or uh, sort of the symbolic, you know, nature of making a vessel, uh, even if it's, you know, not actually meant to hold anything, there's still meaning there and there's still a conversation. And, and um, so, you know, there's a few pieces in, in the show that I really found that in where just it activated my desire to touch or to interact in a way that, that felt um, like it held the humbleness of craft and also the sort of like, you know, stimulated uh, me intellectually and showed me sort of something new about the material or the way that the artist approached it. Um, and so, you know, for me, that was one of the most exciting parts of this. And, um, and one of the reasons I think I'm so excited to see the pieces installed and to see how they're really starting to, to play off one another. Um, I can imagine sort of my body in relationship to those pedestals um, in a way that's, that's pretty exciting. So. Yes, definitely. I was going to say, I feel like the, um, how all the work like plays off one another decently well. Like I was um, pleasantly shocked and I also love the way that it all like came together. Um, it feels like every piece like shines on its own in the gallery and um, we've gotten a lot of great feedback on um, people that come in and we have two spectacular solo shows that are going along with this. So um, everything together just looks amazing. Um, so another thing that I was wanting to ask you, um, when the, uh, wait, where, I think I'm on the wrong page. Didn't know, no, no. Um, so with embracing craft and, um, how sculpture kind of relates to that, could you like talk a little bit about, um, how you feel, um, craft essentially touched base or um, kind of moved itself into the sculpture world. Um, I know that like, um, I feel like originally sculpture was like its own thing and it still is, but I feel like the craft world like slowly creeped in and been like, no, we're gonna claim it as ours almost. Um, but it's uh, still in its own right a craft. Um, could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, again, I think a lot of this just comes from my own personal, like, viewpoint or experience, and, um, and that may or may not resonate with, with everyone, um, but, you know, I guess a part of my, my question back to that would be, like, you know, for how long did sculpture not recognize or admit uh, what craft had given to them? Um, because it, it is, you know, when materials overlap. So like, for example, one thing that I really love about ceramics and, and something that's kept me in there is that it can be so many different things, right? It is literally the brick that builds your buildings. It is the toilet that, um, you know, makes your home modern. It is uh, about half of the paint that's on your wall is actually kaolin, which is you know, one of the primary um, materials in clay. So, uh, you know, I think about the way in which we've sort of made these delineations between like sculpture and ceramics or craft and art. And I sort of think that, that actually they're not doing us a whole lot of good anymore. I think they've maybe, we've come to a point where uh, right now, letting some of those things just sort of dissolve and fall away and focusing on like what we can do with them and how connecting them is uh, serving maybe other needs that we have for finding connection uh, in, in our own lives and in our culture and in our world. That's just sort of the standpoint that, um, that, I've, that I have taken and um, that sort of, I guess, filled my studio time or my perceptions. I still teach in a department in which um, ceramics is a separate department than sculpture. Um, and, you know, at times we've thought a little bit about like what that means to have these, these different disciplines. Um, but ultimately, the, you know, we have stuck with some of those disciplines and those structures because it allows us to really go deep in, in, um, in, personal investigation for the students and material and process. Um, but there have been so many incredible uh, moments where uh, 
you know, some sort of collaboration or coming together has really benefited everyone. So for example, our sculpture department has a kiln and oftentimes when they have questions about what's happening, um, <laughs> they come over and ask me and I, you know, and um, I tell them from, from a ceramic standpoint. And what's incredible about that is that we're staring at the same piece of machinery um, and we're talking about the exact same material and yet we are like coming to slightly different conclusions and experimentation has always been part of craft so you know it's like when you talk about whether it's uh wood turning or whether it's uh you know ceramics or whether it's glass forming every craftsperson takes risks just like artists Yes. Um, I've wondered how much the market and conversations around the market have um, been part of what's upheld those divisions between art and craft. And I've wondered if it's not just, you know, that craft is kind of taking over art, but if art is realizing not only that craft is something that is valuable um, in and of its own right, but also that uh, that work that people can live with and can relate to and understand is something that is, you know, that is desired and also that um, is worth pursuing some of those types of questions. So, um, you know, when I think about sculpture, I, I, um, I definitely think that, that oftentimes sculpture is either pushing against craft or sort of denying craft in some way, shape or form. Um, and that might just be my my staunch like sort of bias. Um, I've always felt like you know one of the true for me one of the truest definitions of craft has been that it's a um, that there's some sort of necessity there, and whether that necessity is for like a physical function or whether that necessity is part of a more internal like an inner life function. Um, yeah. For me, craft, the act of making something, of manipulating something, has this relationship to function. And I don't think that, it, for me, a distinction between, like, you know, a, a function like, oh, this is a bowl that you can eat out of, versus like, this is um, something that's going to serve you in a more spiritual or intellectual way. I, I those distinctions just haven't rung true in my day to day experience. So. I've sort of tried to, you know, keep those at bay a little bit. Um, and so it's nice to kind of see that, uh, that other people are starting to engage in those conversations as well. Definitely. Completely agree with that. <laughs> I'm say. All right. So I'm going to open it up um, for questions. Um, if any. What? Oh yeah, so if anybody has any questions, you guys can open up your mics. You can turn on your videos too, um, so that way we know who's talking. Um, and that way, um, if you guys have any questions uh, for Casey um, or any questions about the exhibition, um, now's a great time to ask and we'll let you guys ask away. So does anybody have any questions? Nobody. Will you be taking us around the show at all with your computer? Unfortunately, no. This time I won't be walking around the gallery. Um, we did upload photos of the space um, this morning. So if you go to our website, um, all the photos are underneath the Constructed Visions 3 um, exhibition page so you can look through those and also we have all the work that's included um, in the exhibition on there as well and Thank there's you. also a video that uh, HECTV made um, walking around and showing um, all the work that's in the show um, they did a great job they do it for every exhibition so definitely check that out and share that with your friends and give HCTV a shout out I may have missed something but are these artists from all over the country or world or are they specific to? Great here? question. Um, so all of the artists that are in this show, we do have a handful of local artists, um, but a lot of, or well, not a lot of them, um, some of them are national. Um, so we do have a handful that are located here in the St. Louis and 
um, surrounding area. And then we have some that are from New York City and elsewhere. So any other questions? It was really a pleasure to, to see all of the different work, all the different ways that people were approaching um, material to kind of just get a glimpse into different people's studio practice. You know, if I had just juried this show based on, you know, whether or not something seemed well crafted or well considered, there really wouldn't have been anything that I could have left out. And it, it was really um, fantastic. And so, you know, I'm just really grateful for, um, for artists who have the courage to put their work out there in this way. And, um, and, you know, I think jurying is an exceptionally difficult, um, uh, it's a difficult task and it brings up a lot of, I think, questions, not just within the juror, but also, you know, all you're seeing is images on a screen. Like, and so, as much as that can convey so much and at the same time each work that I came to it was like the list of questions just seemed to accordion out from from that single image so you know I really appreciate that opportunity and that ability to to see and it was inspiring to to have such a breadth of work and you know there are objects there that I really read as being playful or serious or you know there are some things that I mean, just really made me laugh, like a sense of the absurd in a way. And, uh, you know, and, and again, I just, if there's nothing that I can assert, I think that those are all things that we need uh, to meet this moment right now, each of us navigating the pandemic and, um, and climate change and all of these other uh, changing, our changing art landscape. I'm sure that in the cities that each of you are living in and, and um, in rural areas too, that it's, you know, it has an impact on your artists, your craftsmen, your arts community, your organizations, all of that. So, um, yeah, this, during this show and seeing that work for me really, um, it was an uplifting experience and, and something that I'm really grateful for. Well, I want to say thank you. I was going to say, you've been really great to work with. Um, even when we were going back and forth, when you were in the jury process and you asking all those questions, I was like, oh, I'm so happy. Like uh, typically some jurors that we've had, um, it's a, uh, they're great to work with. And then sometimes you have them and they don't ask the right questions or um, there's like no dialogue. And I felt like with you, there was a great dialogue with us and um, you did a great job picking all the work. Um, and I wanna really thank you for taking the time to do it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we have a private question. No, I do not see it. Yeah, so um, that's, a, uh, that's a lot to get into, but um, so. Um, we, didn't hear, we didn't hear the question, by the way. Okay, so the question just showed up in chat that's not private anymore, so you guys can see that there. Um, it says, um, when you curate a show of multiple artists, do you wait to decide what the show is going to be after seeing all the works? Um, and then as you draw connections between those various works, what is that? Um, that leads you in one direction or another possibility of a theme. Um, for us here, we actually um, develop the theme beforehand. Um, that way, when we put out a call, that um, people can apply to that call with work that they feel best fits that theme. Um, now, that can change. Um, we have had instances where um, we kind of get down to the wire and we like it might not have been a great theme for us to choose and so uh, we'll open it up a little bit and kind of let things go through that typically don't fit in the theme but it might actually look great with the other work in the exhibition um, but for the most part we do pick a lot of our themes before we even make the call go live um, in other instances that can be um, kind of completely contradictory. I've had, uh, I've personally done portfolio exchanges for printmaking where um, 
I kind of wait to get all the work and then I pick the work that I think goes together in the portfolio for an exhibition. Um, Casey, what's your take on that? Yeah, I think it's sort of a dance, to be honest with you. You know, the one thing like in this particular instance with that, um, the theme of constructed visions, I really took those two words as sort of my prompts. So like, for example, um, Cody Arnold's trash series, that sense of like construction, it really is a bunch of objects coming together and being physically sort of like bound or put into relationship but with a very different sensibility than, you know, Howard Jones's like um, objects, the mound broom and the hammers and, or, or Jackson's work ethic where, you know, it's like each of those cuts have to be so precise. And, um, but there is a sense of structure um, in a lot of the processes or, or practices or the way that I understood the works to come to, to creation or to fruition. Um, that for me had, you know, sort of the essence of what it means to construct or to, or to put things together, to bring things together. So there were ways that, I, you know, oftentimes I, there's like this large theme and then I try to think of like sub themes or maybe the work that's presented to me as options helps me hone in on, on sub themes. So I think it's really a back and forth, you know, that's, it's part of what makes jurying really complicated because there's always a couple pieces that you just like, you're like, oh, like this is so good, but I can't quite figure out how to, you know, how to bring it into this conversation. Um, and it's not an uncomplicated process to, to jury yeah. to figure out how to approach themes, but it's really rewarding. And it's really, um, again, I think the, the pleasure and the joy and the challenge is that, uh, artwork reveals itself to you and reveals things about yourself that you might not have like thought about or known um, so yeah I mean when I was looking at this at this work I really was thinking about like different methods of construction and and I think again my my studio is very tactile even though it maybe my my personal work looks really really controlled um, even the lightest touch is something that I consider. So coming from such a tactile uh, like studio background, something that's so hands-on, um, I think that probably, you know, or not probably, I think most definitely I'm drawn to works in which I almost imagine um, it coming through, like coming to life or I imagine the work in its making and I can see evidence of that. Um, in its final iteration or in its final presentation. So, you know, it's like the, my greatest joy if I was in the gallery right now would be just those like close looks at each work. Like I love seeing where like the plane of a, of a form changes or I love seeing the line in something or the specificity of, um, of a woven thread or um, in glass, um, you know, I actually, I love aberrations. I, it's always something that's fascinated me. It's like we, you know, I'm in my work, I'm always thinking about what it means to try to make something perfect. And then also what it means to make something that feels like deeply human or like it's had a life. And, um, and so, you know, when I think about glass too, I think about like the, um, the heat and the pressure and the way that you try to lay everything just right and then the kiln does what it wants to do and you have to accept that or or reject it but you you're confronted with uh with its making not just you but also um the processes that that you're uh, engaging with when they're out of your hands so those you know those sub themes kind of guided me in this in this instance and and again i um, I thought that that was one of the best challenges of putting together the show. Definitely. Was... Yes. Um, so there's another question. Um, if any artist submitted any photography or film or multimedia work, um, off the top of my head, I think there were several um, that did submit this work. I can't think of it specifically what it was off the top of my head. Um, but there is, I'm trying to look around here, there is um, Shivari Perry's work who um, mm -hmm. created these um, kind of collage pieces, but they're using like 
fabric and um, paper and um, different collage techniques. And there's I think, some drawing involved too. Um, and they've turned out beautiful. So they're taking on an entirely different sense um, within the constructed visions. Um, there's also several others that um, were submitted. I'm trying to think of all of them off the top of my head. Well, I think um, if I'm remembering correctly, and again, it's been a little while, so forgive me if I if I make a mistake, but um, Vanessa, one of Vanessa's works, actually, um, the way that it was presented, there were uh, photo stills um, uh, as part of that, that piece that gave more context to mm -hmm. Um, to what it really is fully about. Um, and Jackson, one of Jackson's works as well includes um, some photo documentation of the entire like process that allowed it to come to be. Um, I don't remember a whole lot of uh, work that I would say is, um, is firmly planted in film or, uh, you know, or moving image. Um, but definitely multimedia work, including, again, Coney Ar Cody Arnold's uh, trash series were from um, objects that were collected on a walk with a dog um, and then brought together. So lots of different um, types of materials. Yeah. And, and um, the adventures of um, the Shavari Perry's work which also I think really interfaces with portraiture and with pop culture. It's referencing magazine covers and um, thinking about like, about photography and image uh, proper in a new way. Definitely. Um, also, there was somebody that said um, that they're super excited to see the show now and they hope that there's still time. There is definitely still time. The exhibition closes on September 12th. Um, on September 12th, we will also be having a closing reception. Um, there will not be any refreshments and masks are required, but you are more than welcome to come by from two to four um, for that closing reception. Um, and people can bring their friends and come see the show. So um, are there any other questions from anybody at the moment? All right. Well, I want to thank everyone for coming. I also want to thank Casey again for being the juror and taking the time to join us tonight and talk about the exhibition and your process and um, about craft in general. Um, we hope to see you all um, either at the closing reception or um, if you want to share some stuff via social media, that'd be great. Um, but thank you all again, and I hope you all have a great evening. Um, we will stay on just for a few more minutes um, to make sure that if there's any last questions that you guys can get those in. And then um, you all have a great night. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it. And I, I hope that there was something in this conversation that got your wheels spinning. Maybe it will inspire some studio work or for you to be able to come to the gallery and see the show or um, even just a good conversation. Maybe you totally disagreed with me and you can go. <laughs> you can work your way through it. <laughs> I love those. Sometimes when people say things that I just like can't quite embrace, it's like the start of a whole new investigation for me. So yeah, I really appreciate you all spending your time with me tonight. Thank you so much. I was gonna say, it's great. Everything yeah. looks amazing. I love the, I think this is possibly one of my favorite shows that we've had in the gallery. So it's great. Yeah. I'm so glad. It was such a pleasure to, to curate. Do you know Pauline uh, Verbeek? Okay. <laughs> yeah, Pauline is incredible. And um, gosh, such a skilled and multifaceted human being. And you know, the fiber department, at, uh, Zach and I were talking a little bit early on about, uh, you know, going back to school and, and how to navigate that and uh, the fiber department. It's been so interesting and wonderful and lovely to see students again starting to um, to think about what it means to be in the studio or um, how we maybe have like separated our uh, home lives from our creative lives and to all of a sudden have some of those things coming back like physically into play, not without growing pains, but 
the fiber department has um, lent, lent to some of their students uh, equipment to allow them to do some work at home. And Pauline has just really um, been such a great support for, for those students. And uh, same thing in ceramics. We, you know, I've been um, starting to teach classes outside, which is so satisfying and so gratifying um, because it is, again, the, in the history of ceramics, which is the material that, that I um, am most involved in and most consistently part of the history of that has been that we literally stand on it and bring it up, you know, bring it above ground and then make with it. And so to be in that scenario again is kind of thrilling. Yes, I completely agree. I think it's great. I like love, um, I don't know, going back to teaching and like finding new ways to like, or new approaches to things and um, being able to figure all that out, I think is a new task in itself. Mm -hmm. but, Most definitely. That's great. Awesome. Well, I think that's it. I don't see any more questions coming in. So um, I'll go ahead and end the meeting. Um, thank you all again for joining us and uh, we hope to see you all soon in the gallery. So have a great evening. Yeah. Thank you so much, you all. Take care. No, no problem. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Zach. Thanks. No problem. Thank you. Okay.